Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from ExhibitAutomation.com and welcome to part 7 of our Understanding Docker for Windows video series. And in this video, we'll be talking about understanding Windows Server container in depth. And before watching this part, I would request you to watch part 6 since this part is going to be a complete continuation of that part. Alright, so let's get started. Windows Server Containers a Windows Server container provides application isolation through processes and namespace isolation technology. A Windows Server container shares a kernel with the container host and all the containers host running on the host. So it is kind of very, very interesting to see that we are going to isolate the processes and namespace using the isolation technology. And also this time, the containers are going to share the kernels with the container host, which is nothing but your Windows Server 2016's kernel is going to be shared by the containers. So is it different from the Hyper-V containers? Yes, in many ways. So the difference between the Hyper-V and the Windows Server container is the Windows Server container shares a kernel with the container host and all the containers running on the host, which Hyper-V does not. If you remember from our previous videos of this course, we were trying to see what is the daemon process being running. It was a Windows Hyper-V service running and every time you spin up process within a Hyper-V container, you cannot see the actual process being running within that particular Hyper-V in your host machine because the kernel is completely different from the Windows, right? So remember we were actually using the nano server image of the Windows Server and we were running, running that particular image in our Hyper-V container, right? So those are completely different and the Hyper-V is completely different in that sense than the Windows Server container because this time what we're going to discuss is going to be completely different from what the Hyper-V actually does. And if you ask me whether the Hyper-V container type is being supported by this Windows Server 2016, of course, yes. There is something called as isolation is equal to Hyper-V. If you set the isolation level is equal to Hyper-V, it's not isolation level, it is actually isolation. If you set it to Hyper-V, then your container will run in the Hyper-V as it did in the Windows 10 operating system. So you can do that as well. So there is a provisioning for that in Windows Server 2016 operating system as well, right? So the architecture of Windows Server Container is going to look something like this. And this is something, a screenshot I took from the DockerCon 2016 presentation. So it is did by the Microsoft guys. And you can see that there is a blue box in here, which is the Windows kernel. And the kernel is going to be your Server 2016 kernel, right? And there is a Windows Server Container. And within this container, you'll actually see there is something called a system processes and application process and there are some job objects, net interface, storage registry and you can see for each and every containers that is going to ship is going to have all these boxes that you're seeing here the system process, application process and all those things and there's a blue box on the left side which is nothing but the host user mode and it has a system process as well as the container management and under the container management, you actually have what is called as a Docker engine and a compute service. So if you ask me, what are these boxes really doing in here? I just want to simplify this a little bit. Let's see this in a layman way. As you can see here, we have a blue boxes on the top, the top three, the applications, the OS specific applications and Win32 API. And there's a green box, the kernel, Windows Server kernel. So there is a complete separation between th these two categories. As you can see, the top three are otherwise called as the user space and the bottom is called as the kernel space. So the user space actually has the application that we install. Remember the internet information server that we ran in our nano server in our previous video? That is actually the application that we enabled in the operating system or otherwise called as we installed that particular internet information server on particular image but actually we just pulled the internet information server image from the docker hub and that's why we did not did the actual installation of is in here but if you want to enable or install sublime text or visual studio core or something like that if you want to do all those things you can do that and that is going to sit on the application that we install so you can act you can install that and it's going to act as a layer on that particular space and that's called as the user space 
And then there will be a OS specific application, something like PowerShell, Command, and there are so many other processes like ping. So you can see there are these are some of the applications which is going to be shipped along with the operating system out of the box, right? And those are the applications that are also going to sit in that particular user space. And then there will be a Win32 API call, which is actually hidden inside the RPC call. It is completely hidden to the user, but that's going to be sitting there as well, the Win32 API. And this API is going to be making the call through the kernel and going to perform the operation. And the kernel that you're seeing here is the kernel space. And this kernel is actually going to be a common kernel for each and every container. So if you are going to pull a container from the hub.docker.com, it's gonna have all these things in that particular image. If there is no application, then the application we install, the first box is gonna be missing. But the rest of these boxes, the three boxes will be there within the particular image. It's exactly the same like what we did in our Linux Docker as well. So in Linux Docker, we have something called as an Alpine, the mobile Linux, right? And then on the top, we pulled the Alpine Linux and we just installed it. And it was pretty much exactly the same thing, right? So that's how the whole infrastructure or the architecture is being built for the Windows Server as well. So as that said, will the image size be very small? Because the kernel is going to be exactly the same kernel of the Windows Server. So whether it's going to be the same or whether it's going to be small, not actually. Even though Windows Server container shares the host kernel, there is an base OS which is shipped along with the image which we download from the Docker Hub. So there is something called as a base OS. Base OS, well, what is that again? Yes, the Microsoft is currently shipping two types of base images. One is the nano server image, which we used before in our Hyper-V container demonstration in our previous videos of this course. And then there is something called as a Windows Server Core. So you can see what is this Windows Server Core and what is this Nano Server? Well, the Windows Server Core is actually very huge in size, a full-blown Windows Server operating system as an image. And you can see the size is actually 9.42 GB, pretty huge. And this is because it's a full-blown operating system being compressed as an image and it's out there in the docker.hub.com. So you can pull that. And there is a EULA, you need to read that before you use that in your production environment or using the licensing and all those things. And then there is a nano server. So this nano server is gonna be in small in size, it's uh, very small, pretty fast, and uh, it's for the small footprint applications, and you can see that it is 875 MB. Again, this is also the Windows Server core operating system is just the base OS. So you can actually improve this nano server as well by installing some of the IS and all those web server operations and all those tech things that we did in our previous video of this course. Remember the one with the IS called a nano server tag that we did in our previous video? We just used or run the internet information server on the nano server. Right, so that also you can do this using this nano server image. So yes, there are two base images which is currently being shipped by Microsoft and you can use that. So with the Windows Server Core, you can actually install the .NET 4.5 or .NET 4.6 versions of the image and then you can run your Visual Studio as well. It's a full blown, right? So everything is out there. So let's see all this in action in our next video. So once again guys, thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day.